Most people take their omega-3 supplements the same way they take a multivitamin. They grab a bottle and they swallow a couple of capsules and assume it's helping their heart or their inflammation or their brain health. But what most people don't realize is that you need to take the right formulation at the right dose based on your individual biology to get the actual benefits and to avoid potential risks. And the dosing is especially important because if you take too much omega-3s, it may cause dangerous heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular rhythm that increases your risk of strokes. And if it goes unchecked, it may even lead to heart failure. But there's quite a bit of nuance there because some people are at a much higher risk for developing atrial fibrillation than others. And most people will still benefit from taking omega-3s. You just need to understand your own health profile to determine the correct safe dose for you. So in this video, I want to give you a clear and evidence-based framework to help you fully optimize all the amazing benefits of omega-3s without drifting into ranges that carry risk. And I'll also go over common mistakes I see people make when it comes to choosing the right fish oil supplement. And as always, even though I'm a physician, I'm not your physician. So please talk to your doctor before you make any changes to your health regimen as this video is educational only and not medical advice. So let's start with the core idea of how you need to approach omega-3s. People often talk about the correct dose of omega-3s to take, which is important, but what's often missing from the conversation is how your own body responds to the dose. You and someone else can take the same supplement and the same dose and end up with vastly different results. One person absorbs a well and it gets to the levels that lower the risk of heart disease and they lower their triglycerides and they reduce their inflammation. But another person takes the same dose but it never reaches the therapeutic threshold. And a third person overshoots and puts themselves at risk for dangerous heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation. So the stakes are pretty high here and that's why it's so important to take the guesswork out of this as much as possible. So how I approach this with my patients in my longevity clinic is we never start an omega-3 supplement without first measuring and then tracking our progress. And we do that with a test called omega-3 index. And all it is, it's a simple biomarker in your blood that tracks your omega-3 status in your body. And more specifically, the test measures the percentage of EPA and DHA in your red blood cells. And as you know, EPA and DHA are the two types of omega-3 fatty acids that are found in seafood and algae. So the way this test works, it looks at all the fatty acids on your red blood cell membrane and it tells you how many of those fatty acids are EPA and DHA and it gives you a percentage. So what does a healthy omega-3 index look like? Well, research points to a healthy target of at least 8 to 12% because that puts you in the optimal range for cardiovascular health. There's evidence that this level is associated with multiple benefits like lower risk of fatal heart disease and lower risk of sudden cardiac death and all-cause mortality. 8% and higher is also associated with better brain health and cognitive outcomes. Now most people hang around in the 5 to 6% range which puts them in the intermediate risk zone and if you have an index of 4% or lower well that puts you in the highest risk zone. This level translates to about 90% higher risk of sudden cardiac death and highest risk for heart disease and impaired brain function as well as progression to dementia compared to the people with an index of 8% or higher. In fact, there was a Mayo Clinic meta-analysis of 160,000 people over 14 years that showed that people with the highest DHA levels compared to the people with the lowest levels had 17% reduction in all-cause mortality and 21% lower risk of cardiovascular mortality as well as 17% lower risk of cancer deaths. Now, these are associations, and we have to be careful because association does not mean causation, but the correlation is pretty strong, even when accounting for all the confounders, and it tracks with what we see in meta-analyses of randomized control trials, especially when it comes to cardiovascular health. But here's an important point. The current common dietary recommendations that encourage two servings of fish per week often does not translate to our desired omega-3 index of at least 8%. So that means that most people will have to use a supplement to reach the target. But this is where we run into another important caveat. We need to take doses high enough to get the benefit, but not so high as too high of a dose may increase your risk of developing an irregular heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation, which can lead to strokes and heart failure. And there's several large randomized control trials and meta-analyses that show that omega-3 doses of as low as one gram per day, but especially four grams per day, all increased 
the risk of atrial fibrillation. And it seems like the risk does seem to go up in a dose dependent manner, meaning the higher the dose, the higher the risk. But this is not to scare you off omega-3s. We just need to make sure we pay attention to the dose and properly match that dose to your individual risk profile. So if you look at all these randomized control trials, the absolute increase in the risk of developing atrial fibrillation was anywhere from one to 3%, which is a small risk, but it's not a negligible risk. And it's something that we need to pay attention to. And here's something important that you have to understand. If you take a deep dive into those randomized control trials, the biggest risk of developing atrial fibrillation was mostly seen at doses approaching four grams per day. And the good news is most people just don't need such high doses. Many people can reach our target of an omega-3 index of 8% just by taking two grams of omega-3s per day. And another important pattern to note was the population that seemed to be at the highest risk of developing atrial fibrillation was older adults with already pre-existing heart disease. And it was the OMEMI trial that showed the highest risk of developing atrial fibrillation among all the other randomized control trials. But that trial looked at patients between 70 to 82 years old who had a very recent heart attack. So that population is especially predisposed to heart arrhythmias or irregular rhythms to begin with. So how I approach this with my patients is we try to use the lowest dose possible to get their omega-3 index to at least 8%, which for many people you can get there by having regular intake of fatty fish and taking two grams of fish oil per day. Now, it takes about three to four months before you see any kind of meaningful changes with your omega-3 index because that's how long it usually takes your body to produce new red blood cells. So what I usually do is recheck the index three to four months after starting omega-3 supplements. And if at that point we're still not at the levels where we wanna be, well, that's when I increase the dose and recheck the index three to four months after that. But in my younger patients who do not have any pre-existing cardiovascular disease, we use a more aggressive dosing because that population is at a very low risk of developing atrial fibrillation. And in my older patients or patients who have heart disease, well, the benefits of omega-3s, for the most part, still far outweigh any kind of potential risk. We just have to use lower doses and monitor the levels more closely. But once again, I wanna emphasize that the absolute rates of atrial fibrillation were still very low in all of those studies. And omega-3 supplementation overall reduced the risk of strokes and heart attacks and death. But when talking about risks, and if the risk is very low, let's say 1%, well, if it happens to you, it doesn't matter how low the risk is because now that's something you have to live with. That's why it's so important to use all the strategies that we can to minimize the risk, however low the risk is. Oh, and another important point to consider is that there's currently no evidence that high omega-3 index or plasma levels of omega-3s from dietary sources are associated with increased risk of atrial fibrillation. So ideally, we wanna get most of our omega-3s from food and then bridge the gap with the lowest dose of supplement that gets us to that eight to 12th index range. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the key things you need to be careful with when picking the right omega-3 supplement. So first, one mistake I see a lot of people make is they don't adjust the dosing based on the form of omega-3s they buy. And omega-3s usually come in two forms, either the triglyceride form or the ethyl ester form. And many over-the-counter supplements are sold as ethyl ester forms because they're more chemically stable and they're cheaper to manufacture. But this form of omega-3 is not as well absorbed and it has lower by availability. So with ethyl ester form, you usually need to take higher doses and it's best to take it with a meal that contains fat as that will help with the absorption. Now the form that I usually recommend to my patient is the triglyceride form. That form is the natural structure found in fish oil where you just have three fatty acid chains bound to a glycerol backbone. So this triglyceride form is much better absorbed and it leads to higher omega-3 concentrations in the blood. So you're basically able to reach the same concentration with a low Lower dose. And another mistake that I often see is inappropriate storage of your fish oil supplements. Omega-3s are polyunsaturated fats, so that means they're naturally susceptible to a process called oxidation. Basically, they break down when they're exposed to air or light or heat, and as they get oxidized, they lose their effectiveness. And on top of that, they may also produce harmful compounds like lipid peroxides and reactive aldehydes. And these chemicals can damage cells and they can weaken your intestinal gut barrier so they can hurt your gut health and they can weaken your immune function. So it's very important to minimize that oxidation with your omega-3s. So what we have to do is make sure you pay attention to expiration dates and store your official supplements according to the manufacturer's instructions, which in many cases,
cases will encourage you to store your bottle in the fridge. Now, for any supplement you take, you wanna make sure that the brand that you pick is third-party tested. And third-party testing is especially important when it comes to choosing the right omega-3 supplement because poor quality products can have serious downstream implications for your health. So whichever brand you pick, make sure it's IFOS certified and IFOS stands for International Fish Oil Standards. So that means the product has been independently tested and certified to meet the highest international standards for several key metrics. So you get grades on concentration and freshness, which includes oxidation levels that we talked about. And you get grading on purity, meaning it's free from contamination with toxins and heavy metals. All right, I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one.